So, we are still we will be discussing offshore structures. Now, the salient point that you should remember is the in your this is the uh, jacket platform which you can see. Now, here one thing is to be noted that the piles are driven through the sleeves, these are your uh, uh, pile sleeves, they are called pile sleeves and these are the piles which have been driven. The point that is to be noted, you can see the riser that is your conductor pipes, there are so many in number, but they are coming from the center of the structure. Now, here actually the water depth is also quite large, say uh, 170 or 150 meters. Now, you have to clamp these pipes onto the frame, you know, otherwise they will vibrate. So, that is one of the, here actually this has not been shown, but in jacket structures we have to do that. So, this is one point that is to remember and similar we have here also in the in gravity platform, here also you can see the conductor pipes. See, so the, these are your uh, cells, that is your caisson, this is the base, that is the base slab and the conductor pipes are coming, that is they are unprotected, you know, and some conductor pipes have been passed through these columns. So, here actually the main problem is um, of all these uh, mm -hmm. fixed structures is support to conductor pipes. So, later on in our uh, in your fourth hour we will discuss what is this. So, this is support to marine riser. <coughs> Now, actually uh, at the deck, uh, there is deck, it is clamped, deck support is there and also deck, uh, so this is clamped at deck and the other one is what is called at the well head. So, these are actually you are getting the two supports, well head support. Now, besides that, in order to prevent vibration and because it is a typically very long, long structure, you know the length is quite large, you will have large deflections in the structure. So, intermediate supports have to be given. Now, a lot of research has been done into this riser mechanics in order to prevent failure. So, riser failure is to be avoided, interval supports to be given. So, this is one point that is to be noted in your fixed platform. Now, coming to the other varieties that we were discussing. So, last class I told you how this deck and all they have been um, placed on the platform. Now, next is another group of structures. So, here you can see um, this is the same, this is another jacket but you can vary the dimensions of the truss. You know, you can see the truss dimensions is uh, different. I mean, here the framing is different, here the framing is different. Now, the truss, the nature of this underwater truss uh, varies according to the, see the underwater truss, you write underwater truss varies primarily with what? that is the size and shape. Varies on two prime factors, varies on number one, basic factor is water depth. Now, since these are fixed platform, water depth is a crucial factor which determines the size of this underwater truss. You know. Your depth is high obviously, the structure will be taller and you have a tall structure, you will have large bending moment, you know the topping will be excessive because of the large moment. So, obviously, you have to lengthen the base. So, that means, if you have for a large water depth, obviously, the size is going to increase. So, that is one of the reasons why for depths beyond 300 meter, it is not advisable to go for fixed structures because of this reason. Now, number two is 
wave loads. Now, if, if there is very excessive wave loads, that is the sea is very rough, say in the South China Sea and all that, you will find large amount of deck displacement or deck sway is taking place. Now, if deck sway is very large, first of all the crew will be feeling very uncomfortable and also you will have motions in the riser. Now, riser motions at the deck level, too much motions is not advisable because of there are so many pumps and all that so will stop working. So, here actually the main problem is in this P is equals to K x Now, if you allow say greater amount of displacement, say x is more, then the structure stiffness can be less. You allow sway, okay, you allow displacement, but suppose you want to make the structure absolutely stiff, that is in no way you are going to allow any displacement, they have to make k very large for the same amount of load. Hmm. So, which one do you will go for? You have to decide on either this or this. So, that is one of the crucial engineering designs. So, this decision that has given rise to another class of structures that is compliant structures. Because of this. So, there are a lot of engineering considerations you have to make if you go for offshore structures. So, it is just not one off design that means you have to do your design spiral taking account to a large amount of shape of the even for fixed structures whether you go for this kind of truss or other truss variations. So, obviously, you will have to do constantly you have to change the stiffness that is nature of the truss. Basically, you are changing what stiffness, nature of truss, you change stiffness with load. Now, you will find that whenever you are doing any structural design for offshore structure, that means you have to follow certain codes, follow now, these are the codes that are followed, American Bureau of Shipping. So, these I think you must have come across in your marine design, that is the subject that is ABS, D DNV. So, these are the codes which are normally followed in offshore structure design, ABS, DNV, Lloyds also to some extent. So, these are the codes to be followed and if you go designed for Gulf of Mexico or for the American coast, you have to consult other codes that is called API code. This refers to American Petroleum Institute. Now, actually in the US, wherever, now these uh, structures are basically they are lifting oil from the seabed, is not it? So, they have stringent pollution norms, this is uh, institute here. Yeah. So, pollution norms, so wherever you know, safety and pollution are the most two important aspects to be taken into account, safety and pollution. They are very, very important. So, whenever uh, you see if you are doing work for an offshore company, even if you if your uh, structure and all these things you have designed, they are okay from the point of view, but you have to give very large considerations to the marine riser and how your the method of lifting oil from the uh, seabed such that 
you see one recent disaster was there in the I think Gulf of Mexico, the, uh, the semi submersible caught fire you see, the whole Gulf of Mexico is dirty with oil. So that means once you are caught infringing any of these safety and pollution norms, then you had it, your life will be made hell. So you know, all these things whenever you are go going to any say shipbuilding company or also you are doing work for any of these rigs, these are to be studied in great detail. So these if you want to study, then ABS and API will give you some guidelines, but besides that you have to consult other rules. The other rules that are to be followed is MARPOL, Marine Pollution Regulation. Then you have the IMO guidelines, International Maritime Organization. So all these guidelines have to be followed to prevent pollution. So whenever you design tankers or offshore platform, you please follow these rules, ABS, API, MARPOL, IMO. So these rules are very strict in the pollution requirements. Now besides that, that is why as engineers, you have to give thorough consideration to these type of structures. And one of the cause of structure failure is large displacements. Sometimes you will find the rules also stipulate limiting displacement. limiting displacement. Now actually in st structural uh, design or structural engineering problem, you will find that uh, finding out simply the member sizes in your ANSYS or whatever your uh, finite element methods that you employ after giving the input file from the environmental loads, you know the program, the ANSYS SACs or whatever you have they will give you the dimensions of the structure is fine. But this thing is you have to again consult rules for what is your limiting displacement. Any structure especially uh, our structure comes under the category of what is called tall structures. Even in buildings you will find for large structures, say large structures have limiting displacement. large structures have limiting displacement. So this is one category and uh, structural engineering problems for offshore if you go, then you will find you have to do what is called a limit state design. So this actually the, the end of the class if we have time, uh, then we can uh, look into this, this is called limit state state design. So whatever structural mechanics you are learning that is uh, the finite element method or the, the, the design does not stop there, but you have to find out from limit state design what is your safety index. Well, this we will uh, later on in the class we will come across this. Now this is particularly applicable to offshore, offshore structures. So they are built, I told you around the two prime considerations of safety, prevention of uh, safety and marine pollution. So fundamentally, so this is the problem that we are committing, coming across is that if you limit the displacement, obviously you have to increase the stiffness of the structure that is the size will increase, but you cannot keep on increasing the size at your own will because that will also increase the cost of the structure. So one example I have just given you just by increasing for large water depths that means this uh, truss size actually increases. So this, this problem we are coming across. Now there are various forms of structure now to get around this problem actually engineers have designed large 
varieties of structures. Now, one variety we have we, before we I start discussing our compliant structure, there is another type of structure this is called hybrid platform. So, a hybrid platform actually it is, it is a mixture of your the steel truss, this is from combination of you combine both. Combination of steel truss with gravity with concrete gravity cells. Now, why these people they have not gone for a fully concrete or a fully uh, what is called a steel type of structure an example you can see here. So, this is your hybrid platform. So, this is an example of a hybrid you can see. Now, here you can see that your truss you know truss is quite large. So, this is your steel truss this is a hexagonal steel truss first they have made a triangular base you can see right down. So, these are your concrete concrete cells. So, these are piled piled to the base sometimes you can pile or by means of its weight gravity it settles on the sea bottom. Now, these cells that is your concrete cells are connected first you connect them by a <coughs> triangular frame you can see at the bottom this is in two tiers for me it is very difficult to draw and on top of that you make a hexagonal sort of flow type of bottom of the truss and then you keep on uh, there is a truncate, truncate your truss that is the dimensions will keep on decreasing and here you can see that it is supporting a hexagonal tower. So, this is the truss and tower concept is coming. So, here actually the three dimensional truss that is the steel truss is more complex in nature rather than your jacket platform and you can see that this has been given wide base that is these are sort of stay stay rods you know to prevent the structure from toppling and this part of the structure that is called the top sides these are more or less the same you know whether it be a jacket or a TLP or a hybrid or a so a large amount of variation you will find in the underwater portion. So this type of structure has been created primarily for the hard bottoms but uh, you know if you go for the totally concrete type so that will give a lot of load to the bottom so i think this is the reason why they have not gone for a totally concrete type of platform the other reason behind is that the concrete fully concrete platforms are having large weight the fully concrete one that is your c tank uh, and dock and all these design the fully concrete has very large displacement. Now, if you have this kind of structure difficult tow considerations, difficult to tow large distances. So, nowadays you can build your structure in Singapore and tow it to Gulf of Mexico. Now, tow considerations is another very important considerations in the design of structure. So, this actually comes under your purview that is you have to do the tow considerations. So, these are mainly C motion calculations. Now, you have to find out which type of structure is having less motions during tow and also tow speed. Now, 
now the, that means the platform has to be towed at a certain with a so within a certain time frame after it has been launched you cannot delay you know because otherwise you will be penalized so you shouldn't spend too much time at sea that structure is being towed from say singapore to gulf of mexico or to some other place in the globe time is also an important consideration and sea motions that is heat pitch roll stability calculations with sea motions calculations stability considerations these are very important that is your gz gm and all these things so this is where your services of a naval architect are required so all these now stability considerations sea motions of course the rules may not be that much stringent but here again you follow follow abs to be on the safe side dnv code also has resulted in a few unpleasant disasters so abs is a more on the safe side why the reason i am telling you is most of these offshore companies are american companies like the exxon exxon you have mobil i think only the british petroleum is british exxon mobil then you have all these are american companies so they are more amenable to all these american rules so if you are building a structure for exxon then you have uh mobil mobil is another international global oil company then you have uh, aramco so these are big oil firms american oil companies you know so they are they understand the abs api and american rules more than any other rules of the they will tell you that you the structure is to be designed according to these codes so you cannot go beyond these codes so so this is one of the constraints in your design so anyway so coming to the hybrid category is uh, this is an ex, uh, example of a platform in gon that is gulf of mexico so gulf of mexico the uh, Uh, last class i have given you what are the storm conditions hurricane conditions gulf of mexico is very severe so here that means you have to build most of the structures you can see the base is particularly very wide in order to take care of the topping movement anyway so and uh, the other things which has not been shown here either you can pile this but again underwater piling is very difficult you know suppose you drive piles from here how you going to drive piles so that is not feasible because you are having a steel tower on top so those things are to be remembered so it is better to go for this uh, gravity type of platform so um, after this we come to the compliant category that is compliant structures so here i told you the major problem that we are coming is the displacement and how much compliance is compliant comes from the word compliance to waves external forces so that is the structure actually yields yields to environmental loads you let the structure yield so basic equation that is coming out here is this one that is your p is equal to kx now suppose you re reduce k very large that is you have you will have excessive displacement but again you know Uh, displacement is a limiting factor in design you cannot afford to have large structure displacement especially on the deck where you are having 
the accommodation and other equipment. Now, these type of structures you can see here, out here, there are three categories. So, this is the first one is called a guide tower, which is this, uh, very, you can write, this is called a guide tower. You can see this is a, a steel truss. Now, here you have a universal joint. So, this is a very critical uh, joint design. So, you build a truss type of structure like this. Now, so here you have to pin this down to the base. So, this is your joint. Now, this you can, now this has to be fixed to the seabed, isn't it? So, best thing is to drive piles. But again, the pile driving is also uh, difficult. So, any underwater activity is very expensive, isn't it? So, that means the offshore contractor or who is the vendor, that is, he has to be very, very careful. Otherwise, a lot of litigation will be there if there are failures. Structure failure giving rise to oil pollution that means you just have your life out. So, this is your deck. So, normally all these you, you will see that is why in the most of these companies are American companies that is they have wide experience in the international environment. Hardly you will find any uh, this thing uh, company from the developing countries say Singapore or China or say India doing oil exploration uh, because of this reason. Now, here this is your guide tower. Now, this, the, this is another example of a compliant structure. So, here actually you can see that the structure in its uh, <coughs> detail. Now, this you have horizontal. Now, what is not shown here is that so, this is your wave height okay? and this is your seabed. Now, you fix this uh, <coughs> universal joint to the seabed. So, this you can is better to drive piles, pile and this one you have here is a universal joint. So, just imagine how big is that universal joint. Now, this universal joint will allow the structure to sway in all the directions. So, it can move in this direction, this direction, any direction it can move. So, the behavior is as a behavior of this structure is similar to a similar to inverted pendulum. So, that means your structure is out here, it can sway like this. So, it is behaving instead of as a pendulum like this, it is behaving as an in inverted pendulum. So, the motions of the structure as a inverted pendulum. Now, you will find that if this is the case, there are two things in your that you have to design is that the structure has to remain upright, is not it? The structure should not fall like this or go below the seabed. Uh, below the uh, uh, wave. So, whenever a large wave is coming, now what is normally done in this structure, it has not been shown, you give a buoyancy tank, it is preferable. Instead of, of an open truss at this region, so most of these compliant structures have what is called a buoyancy tank. a buoyancy tank at mean sea level or at say water level. So, a buoyancy tank will give you the upward force. So, if you have a wave force coming out here, so that is going to 
still to the structure, isn't it? So your buoyancy that is going to give you the writing moment. Hmm. So you have one writing moment out here and this downward. So this couple <coughs> is acting like this and this is the overturning moment. <coughs> the overturning moment is your the horizontal h multiplied by l. So that is the overturning moment. So the amount of buoyancy you give and there will be reaction from here. This is the upward, the weight and all are coming down. So that is your writing moment. So you have to balance the overturning moment with the writing moment. Now this is not all. Your buoyancy tank may not be sufficient to give that much of buoyancy. Otherwise, you have to the whole structure you have to make a buoyancy tank, which is normally they don't do it because you have to cut down on the weight because of cost considerations. Now, what is normally done? You fix this type of structure by means of what is called guy ropes. You anchor this to the seabed. by gravity anchors. So, these are called that is why the name has come guide tower from these guy ropes. Guy ropes are, are not ropes made of the choir, but they are large steel ropes or steel anchor steel or rather you write not anchor steel wires and here you can have gravity anchor. Now in offshore normally you use, we use these gravity anchors. Gravity anchors very large, the reason they are called gravity is they are made of concrete. Concrete and each anchor can weigh as much as say 1000 tons. So frequently you will find in offshore they use this type of gravity anchor. I do not have the diagram of a gravity anchor, but this is you can take it for granted as these are some of the. So this you write piled base. So this is a guide tower. Now here this is one, one type of tower. The other one you can see this is a articulated flare. This is an articulated flare. This is actually a smaller than your guide tower. Okay. Now here actually the tower is uh, pretty slender, and here here also you have a universal joint. So these compliant structures, because they swivel, literally they swivel about the base as an inverted pendulum. So you should always have a universal joint. And you can see the export pipeline is being flared. So this is actually this tower articulated, they are called articulated flare. That is they are only service you are taking the oil or gas from some other platform and igniting it. So this is a flare structure. So this is not used for taking say top side weights, top side heavy weights are not there. So this is a flare kind of structure. And most of these structures you remember that is the particularly the guide tower. Guide tower and your articulated flare are small structures. Small structures. So these structures are actually suitable for, normally used for for offshore mooring. Uh, this is what we will discuss after mid-sem. Offshore mooring buoys. Uh, later on, I will give you various configurations of these mooring buoys. When we study moorings, you will find the offshore mooring buoys, most of these smaller type of structures are used. Now the larger category 
coming to on, on the compliant side, last we discussed is your TLP. The TLP is a large structure. TLP or sometimes, so this is called a tension leg platform. In some literature, they are also called tethered buoyant platform or TBP. Now, the most famous of these platforms is your Hutton TLP, North Sea. You will not find TLP in the Indian Ocean or Gulf of Mexico. Hutton TLP that was constructed in way back in 1984. It was the first TLP design. After that, I do not know. So, this if you want to have a look, you can consult Offshore Technology Conference, OTC. OTC around this 1984, Offshore Technology Conference in 1985. So, this they have discussed the modalities of construction and also the operation of a Hutton TLP. So, this is in British North Sea. British portion of North Sea. So, this is the uh, TLP, these are actually compliant structures. You can write they are large compliant structures. This is the basic difference between now TLP hull. A, since you are naval architects, you may have to design a TLP. A TLP hull is similar to some extent, similar to semi submersible. So, those of you who are working in Singapore, you will come across the building of these semi submersibles and TLPs. So, they are made in, now our country does not make all these offshore platforms. Normally, you will find in Korea and Singapore, uh, they are being built. Uh, one of the firms they are building is your, uh, this uh, firm that is the, they have a Bombay office. So, anyway, so this the TLP hall is similar to semi submersible. Now, the basic difference from semi submersible is heave restriction, different from semi submersible. only in heave, heave restrictions. So, heave is actually absent in TLP. Literally, there is no heave in TLP because TLP, if you look at the diagram, you will find that is tied to the seabed by tethers. So, this is your TLP. Now, the, those of you who are interested, you can refer to uh, your, you see the journals 
in our library, ocean engineering journals, NAMI, offshooting of the conference, whether we are having or not, I do not know. Now, that will also give you a, so this is TLP. Of course, the deck modules will come here, which I have not drawn. Now, here, so this is a basically a semi submersible hull. Further, now the structure is tied down to the seabed by tethers. So, these are called tethers. Now, here you have your uh, the conductor pipes that are being led to your the deck of the platform. So, these are your conductor pipes. Now, here you find there is another structure that is quite large. So, this is a piled base. Now, TLP, the siting of the TLP on the seabed is very tricky. So, these are called piled base, the other one is called a template. This template is very important. So, in TLP, now TLP hull, so this is your uh, pontoon, basic it is made up of pontoon columns, deck, these are called your bracings. bracings, these are your tethers and this is your marine riser. Now, this uh, hull that is without the deck modules, they are brought to site. So, you bring it to a particular location, but before that you should have made the base ready. Base has to be made ready before you bring the structure on top of the location. Okay. Then these tethers, tethers or wire ropes are led from the columns or pontoons down and they are tied to the piled base. This is one major operation, underwater operation. Now, next what is to be noted, now the template is also piled to the seabed. Now, what is the template? Template is a structure template that is the template top is connected to marine riser. It is connected to marine riser through what is called through BOP. BOP is called, now this is a very important equipment in offshore, this is called a blowout preventer.
broke preventer. So in Gulf of Mexico, what happened that oil pollution is because of BOP failure. So this blowout preventer will be located somewhere here. So blowout preventer is nothing but a set of valves which is regulating the pressure of oil that is coming from the oil reservoir. So here you have the BOP stack. Now naval architects should remember that for floating platforms BOP is located on the seabed on the template. The semi submersible will also have BOP location on seabed. Uh, whereas for jacket platforms, BOP you can locate BOP on the deck of the structure. Jacket platforms uh, you have here, BOP location will be somewhere down the but BOP essentially is a connection point for your marine riser. So BOP is very important not only from the point of location of your marine riser, but there is there are operational and maintenance requirements for BOP. Operational and maintenance of BOP. Now this dictates what is called, this has influence on riser design. So this is quite complicated stuff and affects platforms, platform design. BOP location. So an example I uh, given you for TLP, BOP location is at the base of the structure. Now there are a number of design options that has developed because of remote operation of BOP. Whether you can operate BOP from the deck or from satellite, nowadays they also operate from satellite operation. So remote operation of BOP, is it possible or not? So this also dictates your cost of the platform, remote operation of BOP on platform deck and nowadays <coughs> they are going for satellite communication, satellite. So that means you can, sometimes they can man it from say an earth station, say in Norway or UK, their office, they can man the BOP from there to satellite, that is called remote operation of BOP. So your technology has advanced to that extent. You know, sometimes in case of storm is coming and persons have to be evacuated and they close down BOP, emergency operation of BOP. So emergency operation of BOP from where you are going to go? Emergency operation of BOP. because this actually regulates the flow of oil, BOP regulates flow of oil from the oil reservoir. Now BOP is more or less used in your, that is in your drilling platform and in production platform you will find 
the same BOP is replaced by this is in a production platform. Sorry, this is BOP replaced by another set of valves, what is called Christmas tree. You will come across these terms frequently in offshore. This is called a Christmas tree. So, that means in your BOP while drilling that is your drill, drill string will go through one of these pipes, but in a production Christmas tree that sort of thing will not be there. So, this is called a or rather you can write production Christmas tree. There is nothing but a set of valves only, but the structure is different, little bit different from BOP. So, uh, here uh, um, these are the uh, operations. So, remote operation of BOP, so this is another point to be considered. Now, offshore if you go, you will find that um, there will be a large platform somewhere and you have huge number of pipes coming from the seabed and then going to the top of the platform. So, that means a oil platform can be surrounded by what is called surrounded by satellite wells. So, that means uh, in Gulf of Mexico if you go, in Gulf of Mexico you will find the seabed to be literally crisscrossed by submarine pipelines and satellite wells. So, that is the scenario in your uh, oil expression or offshore oil. So, here the, the after studying your platform you should have some knowledge about offshore piping or submarine pipelines. So, pipelines are important connections for platforms to wells, well heads. So, that brings us to the end anyway on the other varieties TLP, I will discuss a little bit about semi submersible and what is the difference between TLP and then we will, I will tell you the, give you the formulas for your wave and current loads and that we close before mid